Hello, so if you saw my last video, you'll know that I was using FreeCAD to create images, rather models, e.g. cubes, cylinders, and so on, using FreeCAD, and I was using Python to do this programmatically. However, I had an issue whereby I couldn't use the FreeCAD GUI commands whilst I was running from the FreeCAD CMD command line. And that would, it would hamper me doing things at high speed purely from the command line because although I could trigger FreeCAD from the command line, it would need to open FreeCAD. Then it would need to run the GUI based commands and then it would need to close it. So making an object like a cube was fine, but as soon as I tried to apply a fillet, then that's when I started getting issues, which then led me to CAD query. Now, who wants to make unlimited pieces of Lego? Anybody? Well, this just so happens to be the example which has been provided. And I think it's quite a good one because uh, it just demonstrates the flexibility of being able to write code to generate your 3D models. So what is CAD Query? CAD Query is an intuitive, easy to use Python library for building parametric 3D CAD models. It has several goals. Build models with scripts that are close as possible to how you describe the objects to a human using standard already established programming language. Create parametric models that can be very easily customized by end users. Output high quality CAD formats like STEP and AMF in addition to tr traditional STL. Provide a non proprietary plain text model format that can be edited and executed with only a web browser. So we're looking at CAD Query 2. If you look up CAD Query and you try and do a pip install, chances are that's CAD Query version 1. CAD Query version 1 was specifically written for FreeCAD and they've taken a bold decision to stop basing it upon FreeCAD and to base it upon the Open Cascade modeling kernel, which means that going forward, uh, they're less going to be less affected by any changes made in FreeCAD. And the other big benefit is this can be run purely from command line. So if you want to write a Python script to make, what have we got here? <laughs> a square with a hole in it, a square with five holes in it, I'm being a bit facetious here. These are obviously the basic examples. Um, there's a whole library of examples here. And just let's go, we've got simple block, block with board center that we just looked at. Um, coming down here, we've got sweeps, lofts, revolutions. If any of you are familiar with SolidWorks, you'll know what sweeps, lofts, and revolutions are. Helix, so a helix could be used for um, a screw thread or a nut or a bolt and down here we've got a Lego brick and this is this code is what I have started with as the basis for my Python code to make a Lego block so all I've really done is rather than render the solid within the script I have decided to render the file to an STL file, which is a type of file that you will send to a 3D printer. So without further ado, let's, let's just do a demonstration. Um, and then for those of you who are short of time, then uh, you can just go and you don't have to listen to me bang on about stuff. So um, again, as I did before with, um, with FreeCAD and with some other projects, I create a CSV and then I use CSV to feed my template. So effectively, this is my template. So this code is what you just saw. So it's all the Lego making code on GitHub. CAD query, GitHub, you'll find it. So pitch, diameter. If you know anything about Lego, you know it's got those bumps and you can have as many well, with this code, you can create as many pieces as you want, and you can specify how many bumps wide, how many, how many bumps long. So without further ado, let's run it. So we'll run the code, and then I'll just, we'll look at the, uh, we'll, let's just clear this. So um, one major thing, CAD query relies on 
specific versions of Python. And if you've got Python 3.96, which I had, then you'll get errors. So go back and change. If you're using Conda, just go back and change your environment to use Python 3.8 because that works. Um, CQ is my CAD query.py file. Run it. It'll take a few seconds and <laughs> you'll understand why it's taken a few seconds when you see there's about 17,000 lines of code in a large piece. So if we go back to VS Code, as if by magic, they weren't there just now. So we've made eight, sorry, nine files. Uh, if I open that one, I'll just show you how many lines of code there are. And wow, 30, 326,000. That's, that's a lot of lines. Right, so let's just look at one of those files. And if we choose one at random, Let's open up file seven. Before we do that, let's just check um, file seven. So that's the, not the penultimate one. So it should be six by two. So we want six Lego bumps long and two Lego bumps wide. And that's what we've got. <laughs> and the reason we've got that is because that's what I put in the CSV file. So, what we've done is I've used the Lego example for CAD query, which is uh, available on GitHub. And really all I've done is I've passed variables from my CSV, which then gets inserted into the Lego making code. And let's have a look at another one. So uh, what was the last one? 10 by four. So if we just, um, I'm also using something called G, G mesh, GMSH to read the STL files. If you wanna make step files as well, you can, there's multiple output formats. So let's look at number nine, we should see 10 by four. Wow, that's, um, that's quite an impressive piece of Lego. <laughs> I wouldn't wanna stand on that. So, in fact, let's just go crazy, shall we? Let's, um, right, let's delete these. Um, and let's finish off with a really mad one. So let's, let's see if we can do 30. This probably will slow the computer down when it makes it. So if you're ready, let's do it again. Uh, and I reckon this may take the best part of a minute, maybe. The last one's going to take a while. That's going to be hmm, half a million, maybe a million lines. Thirty by ten. That's. Um, I guess uh, for those of you familiar with Lego, I guess that would form sort of um, a, a large rectangular base for your little house or something. Wow, there we go, it's made it. So I didn't time that, but that was probably getting on for a minute. Um, dare I open it? Yeah, let's try it. <laughs> um, oh. Okay, uh, what's that? Wow. 2.9 million lines. No wonder we got a, a warning message about that. Um, right, let's try and view that then. So with Gmesh, should take a while to open this as well. I would. Wow. <laughs> I guess you would get a piece of Lego like that if you were, like I say, for like a house base or or, or maybe some. Road you used to get Lego roads with uh, loads of bumps on the outsides. So there we go. Anybody who wants to programmatically create three-dimensional models using Python. Now I'm not going to go into the sort of the the finer intricacies of building this model because it's something I'm still sort of familiarizing myself with. But what you have is uh, what the 
CQ, so you have a, a import CAD query as CQ up here, line seven. Let's just zoom in on that. And um, yeah, then you have these various methods that go with CQ. So um, work plane, um, you got extrude there, dot circle. Um, extrude, let's say extrude. There was another one called uh, fillet, I believe, chamfer. So faces. So yeah, work plane dot array dot circle dot extrude. So that's the bit that's actually making all of the uh, the bumps as per the comment. Um, shell inwards, not outwards. Okay, that's a bit of a taper on it for when it gets molded, I believe. Um, so yeah, that's how you can create a CSV and you can pass those values using pandas uh, to CAD query and CAD query will generate you a three-dimensional model. So any questions, uh, drop me a line. Um, as I say, if anybody wants to learn more, then there's numerous examples on, these are actually um, Jupyter notebook models. So you can actually test these out in Jupyter as well. So um, yeah, rounded corners with fillets, countersink holes, Lego brick. Um, there's one there, I think there's a parametric enclosure. Oh, that's binder, that was me experimenting earlier. Um, yeah, swept helix. In actual fact, that's quite a short one, look. Um, dare I test this live? <laughs> no, I'm going to save this for the next video. If, if you would feel like trying it in yourself, so they've got cq.wire, so that's a wire mesh dot make helix so that again that's a built-in method of uh, CAD query so there's so much that's already been done I hope you've enjoyed this and uh, found it interesting have a good play experiment with it and just remember install it using Conda and use Conda 3.8 because other versions I've had problems with so uh, yeah Conda 3.8 install CAD query don't do pip install you need to use Conda and um, yeah, then off you go, you're good to go. And if you, ex if you, rather than show the result, I don't know, depending on what IDE you're using, you may or may not show it. Um, just output the file, to export the file as I did in my code, which I did on the very last line, which was uh, here exporters.export so to do the export for part you need to do um, this here from CAD query import exporters and exporters.export lego piece that's just what I called my output of my make lego function so if you look at their code there's no functions involved but I just created my own function and then I um, said lego piece equals make lego um, and then I just called the file as per the current iteration. So I had nine lines in my CSV file, so I just called my pieces uh, one to nine. The first line gets ignored because we're dealing we because pandas thankfully um, takes no notice of that, and it starts from ten by three. So um, line two here would be Lego one, and that would be. Lego 9 as we've already looked at so yeah thanks for watching if you've got any questions wow yeah if you've got any questions uh, drop me a line I'm still fairly new to this but um, I'm going to be using it going forward and doing some hopefully some clever stuff with it so in the meantime thanks for watching and I'll see you next time